What's up guys, Paul Simon here. So let me show you something real quick that you never want to see on your helicopter. The first of caution warning lights and you get a flashing EMU light there too. Okay. Okay, coming up, we're gonna talk about that. Stay tuned. Okay, since January 15th of 2020, uh, Robinson has added uh, engine monitoring units to the R-22 and the R-44. They've always had them on the R-66, but uh, recent, it's been a relatively recent addition as of January of 2020. Okay, so this came up. We had a guy that brought in a brand new R-44, well, not a brand new R-44, an R-44 is fairly new, and uh, it had the uh, EMU had shown that he had had an exceedance, all right? So the EMU actually tracks, keeps track of four different parameters, rotor speed, engine speed, oil temperature, and cylinder head temperature. So at about that same time, they went to enunciator panels and got rid of the old fashioned caution warning lights that used to be uh, in one or more rows across the panel. So let's take a look at that. So here's the older style when we had to, when you had to actually, during your pre-flight do the check for about six of your caution warning lights here. Well, that's been changed now, so let's take a look at the new style. So here's the newer aircraft. If you notice back here, where you normally would have all the test buttons for the caution warning lights, there's nothing there. <laughs> so uh, Robinson has gone to a uh, panel up front here. Open the door to show you here. Where they have a series of caution warning lights across in an enunciator panel over the on the top of the panel here and you just press that button and it does your entire check all at once so those buttons that you used to have to check to, uh, to check the caution warning lights uh, don't exist anymore okay so let's say that you've had an exceedance and your EMU is uh, flashing now when you push the test button and you'd like to know exactly what the exceedance was well Robinson has um, an app you can go to the app store on an iPhone and you can download it to an iPad. You can't load, download it to an iPhone, but to an iPad. And if you just do a search for Robinson EMU, you'll come up when you can download the app. And that app, you can uh, put it on your iPhone and it Bluetooths to the aircraft. And this is a sample one, but uh, you can uh, Bluetooth and connect and it will show you exactly what the exceedances were on whether it was rotor speed, engine speed, oil temp, cylinder head temp and it'll, it'll show right there. You can't reset it. It has to be a mechanic that does the reset. And once the EMU is flashing, the mechanic has to be the one to do the reset. But you can at least look and see what the exceedances were. There's also a user's guide on Robinson's website. It's a little bit difficult to find. Uh, let me take you over here to the computer and I'll show you exactly the clicks that you need to, <laughs> to make to get through to the uh, user guide for the uh, Robinson EMU app. Okay, so here we are on the Robinson uh, website. In fact, if you type in right here, robinsonheli.com, it'll take you to Robinson's website, which looks like this. Now, if you move up here to publications and just kind of hover over publications, it gives you a pick list here. And what you want to do is come all the way down to the bottom right here where it says user guides, slide over to the R22 and R44 EMU and click on that. Okay, that brings you to this page, and over here on the left-hand side, you can see it says User's Guide. So if you click on that, take it a second to load up. There you go. There's your R22 and R44 EMU User Guide. It's about 16 pages long, and if you have an R22 or an R44 that has an EMU in it, you need to be sure and read this guide. Okay, it's pretty straightforward, pretty in simple language, easy to understand. Okay, so let's talk about... Uh, when you hit that test button what you're seeing and what it means all right so if you hit the test button and when you first turn on the master it takes about 10 seconds for the emu to go through its little self test and then after that point you can press the the test button and it's going to uh, give you uh, useful information 
When you press the test button, if the EMU illuminates and it's steady on, that means that the EMU operation is normal. Hadn't been any exceedances and the EMU is working. If you press the test button and you get a, a flash about every two seconds, then it shows that you have a fault with the EMU and that needs to be addressed by a mechanic as well. The third option is you press the uh, test button and you get rapid flashing. It's about four times per second and it's just rapidly flashing at you. Then you've had an exceedance and that needs to be looked into. Now I told you that it tracks four things, right? It actually tracks seven things. There's three additional things, manifold pressure, ambient temperature, outside air temperature that it tracks, but uh, the mechanic has access to that, but you're only going to be able to look at four or seven if you download the app and use it. Okay, so what are the ramifications of having an exceedance? Well, the most likely exceedance you're going to have on there is, well, two. Engine overspeed if you crack the throttle when you start it up. And then number two, if you're practicing auto rotations, you can have a uh, rotor overspeed. Uh, the rotor overspeed is going to give you an indication if it exceeds 108%, you're going to get an exceedance on there. And are you ready for the bad news? <laughs> the bad news is... If you've had a, an exceedance of 108% on rotor RPM, it gets pretty significant on the inspection that you have to do. You have to pull the blades off of it. You have to pull the blades off, and there's some other things that you look at. Essentially, what you're trying to do is figure out if there was any brindling of the spindle bearings. If the overspeed exceeds 114%, it gets even more interesting. Not only do you have to pull the blades off, but you've got to do a bunch of die-penetrant die studies. There's all sorts of things that you've got to do. It gets a lot more lot more complicated and a lot more expensive so uh, in the past this is a definitely a step forward because in the past somebody could exceed you could have multiple exceedances on the aircraft and you would never know it didn't have an EMU on and somebody could take an R44 out and uh, sloppy as hell doing auto rotations and exceed the uh, limits and unless you knew how to recognize when brindling of spindle bearings occurred and I'm not going to get into all of that but in the past, somebody could have exceeded the, the limits on it, and you'd have no way of knowing. So this is definitely a step in the right direction. At least now, they've got an engine monitoring unit, and the aircraft can be looked at if there's any significant exceedances. And uh, again, two thumbs up and a snap to Robinson for making an improvement in the, uh, in the aircraft. Okay, well, I hope this was helpful and at least partially uh, uh, educational and entertaining. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next video.